Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to Richardson Outdoors. Um, sorry if I talk relatively quiet. My parents are uh, kind of going to sleep right about now. Um, but real quick, I want to give a really quick shout out to uh, what's his name? I think his name is Charles Martinez. Um, he was one of the first people to comment on the first video, and he said to just throw in like something blue, like a blue lure, into that pond that I was at. Um, to catch bass, he said he's how that's how he does it all the time because he actually fishes that same exact pond um, quite a bit and he catches quite a few bass. Um, now in the future, I might go to Rio Vista because I I can sight fish the bass a little better. Um, but yeah, so right about now, I want to go ahead and go over some of the lures I got um, so you guys can leave a comment down below describing what kind of lure you think I should use in the next videos uh, to come. Now, as uh, this is a real quick shout out to uh, Andrew Flair, I believe. Um, if it's not Flair, then it's probably AP Bassin, but I'm pretty sure it's Flair. Um, he does something called junk fishing. He actually made a video of it not too long ago, but basically that's what I usually do. Um, I usually throw in a couple different lures and I see what works, what I hit, get hit on, and then I'll use a variety of the same kind of lure. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So, real quick, we're gonna go over the lure box and just some um, lures I have along with um, one of my jigs. My other jig is actually in the bottom of this saddle box. I don't feel like getting it out because it's relatively the same as this. Um, real quick, actually. Just a nice. Sorry guys about that. Um, I guess I can only make like certain amount of time a video because um, I'm using my Mac. I'm using the photo booth camera uh, just because I didn't want to get out my camera gear and set up just for a quick video. So this is the jig that I like to use. It's a nice simple football head uh, attached with the crop trailer. It's black and blue. Um, pretty sure. Hold on. I think I have the actual bag the craw came in in here. There we go. They are the Havoc Rocket Craw with the black and blue flake. So yeah, uh, I'm actually like down a few. Um, I lost like a few uh, while I was throwing in some heavy cover and I actually had to go buy another football jig because I actually lost it in there. Um, at that pond that I fished at, there's actually some like it drops in some really weird places. There's a lot of rocks in there. Um, great for catfish though, probably. Um, anyway, I like to, to fish this around some heavy cover. Um, usually, I'll, this is really sticky hook, so it's hard to get it in and out of cover, but I've actually got the weedless on there, which most finesse jigs really do. Um, but yeah, I really like this bait. Uh, it's one of my favorites to use. I actually have a smaller version, so I was talking about it's in there. Um, it's not a football head, it's just, I think it's a flat top. Uh, but yeah, so moving on. I was told to use this. Uh, I have heard a lot of fishermen catch a lot of nice big bass on these spinnerbaits. Um, I have never used it, but I've caught some pike and walleye on this before. Uh, that's the only ever time, but I did it without this little grub trailer. Um, I just thought that the grub makes it a little bit more effect on the on the back. I don't know. I'm actually watching some uh, flathead fishing going on in the back. Um, I've got a whole bunch of crankbaits. Um, my favorite to use is the bluegill style one. Um, crap. I keep them all together so I can just pull them out at once and that really doesn't work sometimes. Um, it's a really simple bluegill color. Nice blue under belly and uh, Nice. I don't know, it works great, um, especially up at Lake Roosevelt. Anything that's bluegill color or shad up at Pleasant is great for any kind of fish, any time of the year. Um, but yeah, I've got a few poppers, but I'm not going to really go over them real quick. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, come back with you guys in a second. So hold on. Alright, guys, so I'm back. Um, remember, I had to cut away from that because it's stung for some reason. 
Now, this is one of my all-time favorites because these are perfect for clear water. Um, and a lot of places up at Pleasant have really nice coves that are clear water. And I love to use this while I'm trolling, um, mainly because it's got the little beads in it that makes it that makes it give off that extra sound. I actually there's four beads in here, and um, there used to be a, well, there used to be a kind of jerk bait that you could actually um, take apart and add more beads in there for more sound, um, or take away beads for less sound, depending on the time of the year that you're fishing and how active the bass are. So let's go ahead move on to soft plastics. So these are some young Sankos. Um, these these work great. These are actually some five inch um, young dingers. Um, watermelon red flake. It's even actually got that, uh, like the extra salt on it too. I actually haven't used these uh, yet. I've been trying to get rid of some of the other green watermelon ones that I have lying around. But yeah, so I just, I just like to throw those every once in a while. Um, I actually like to bite off a bit sometimes. Probably not those because they're all full of salt. But I like to bite off of those so that I can um, kind of use it for... Mm, I sometimes wacky rig it sometimes, but I like to Nika rig it a lot. So yeah, that really helps. And this guy right here, I've never used it, but I plan on doing it in the future. Just a black with a can't really tell if that's orange or red. It's I think it's just a like a nice bright orange. I actually kind of like the color of this. That oh, blends in really nice. Yeah, um, it's actually got this. You can see that. It's got this kind of like smooth part and then the ribbed over here and over here. Um, I don't know what that's for, but um, I think it's so that you can feed the hook through there and Texas rig it really nicely so it's kind of flush up against it. Alright, uh, I actually just keep these in a bag because I lost the uh, I lost the actual packet that came in. Um, and I didn't have any more room in my actual plastic case. Oh, I just kind of close it on the worm. <sighs> Don't you love this, guys? It's great. Okay. And moving on. So, these are some, these are actually what I use to Nico rig. Um, so, what I do, um, now this is on behalf of, oh, what's his name? It's not Flare, it's not AP Bassin. I'll, I'll probably fill in somewhere where who it is. But I actually got the idea from him to use just some nail weight in the front. Um, what I'll usually do because these are actually pretty heavy, I'll actually cut away a little bit and maybe to like right there, I'll cut it right here. And then I'll just rig it through the smooth part, and that's what I normally rig on. And it gives it that really nice effect of this hitting the rocks, and it allows me to feel for the rocks on the bottom. And I don't know, it it gives me a lot of confidence for some reason, because um, I've had a lot of hits on it, like really quick hits, like almost a bluegill came at it and just snatched it and let go. So it's it's really fun to fish with this. Um, I had smaller versions of this with tiny, tiny zinc, um, zinc weight in there, and it's just so fun. I've even caught a little, I've caught big bluegill on this thing too, so that's pretty cool. Alright, next up. Alright. Oh wait, I have some more. So um, I actually completely forgot about these new drop shot rigs I went and picked up. Um, I think I still need to pick up the hooks for them, but other than that, I think I have it. So they're standard. Uh, what are these? these are also straight king. Wow. 
um, but these are the KBD perfect plastics um, so yeah I, and I really like this I really like drop shot rigs because they um, they have that kind of feel for them that their appearance really stands out from any other kind of worm because it's got that flat part on the bottom so it's got the flat part and it rounds flat and then it's got this really cool um, piece that actually allows it to stay buoyant a little bit and just kind of float there and it's really nice um, especially when you jig it because it's got that really erratic action going on in the back because it's so flimsy right here so yeah I'm going to put that back in the bag before I kind of lose it because um, I'm not going to lie I'm a mess when it comes to fishing sometimes I just kind of throw things into the tackle box because I run out of time or because I'm kind of just impatient about it um, but yeah so in here I actually got like two more plastics because I didn't have any space they're just little cool rubs and uh, I actually have two little swim baits in here one's a nice uh, little shad color and the other one is just a nice young because if you didn't know bass eat bass so you know I've actually caught uh, one of my biggest bass at Lake Pleasant with a, with it like with a fry just on the hook just baby fry on the hook um, all I did was really just drop it over the side of the boat and <laughs> if it weren't for my parents I would have lost one of my favorite my favorite rods um, that I've had forever so yeah so these work great um, especially when you just like if you can not you can't always do this but what I like to do is I like to get the string I tie it normally this is how you would any other kind of jig and I wrap it around this and I tie it off and it gives it that feeling of like a dead fish in the water because bass are opportunistic honestly they're gonna bite if they're hungry because they don't know when their next meal is gonna be so it's great to change up your lure style a little bit and it also kind of hides the lure from them because uh, if it's on top they can kind of see it and move through the water and you can still see it now if you turn it over it's all another game changer wrap around and it gives it that look that the fish can't help but just snatch it I promise you um, now this box is just full of um, some of my spoons and just some shine rigs and some feather rigs um, these are actually some of my dad's old ones but they work great for crappie I'm not gonna lie these are some of the best jigs for crappie that I've ever used in my life I, I've trolled with these a whole bunch at uh, Roosevelt Lake and they work great um, I haven't ever used them at the ponds because they don't have crappie in the ponds here in Arizona I think pretty sure anyway smallmouth bass first of all they love they love these I'm not gonna lie to you if you if you don't catch a bass on, if you don't catch a smallmouth on these um, there's something wrong with those smallmouth in that area because panther martins and cast masters they I don't know they're they just they just spin around it like that and the bass can't help it they really love that that red and yellow any kind of bass love this I, I promise you I've caught white bass I've caught striped bass um, largemouth smallmouth um, I think I've even caught yellow bass I think that's a thing somewhere in the canals here in Arizona but these are great they're great jigs and I love them I love to troll with them all the time um, but yeah that's the basic on trying to make it as least noise as possible. That's kind of loud. So that's all the shines and the, and the only two swim baits I have. I mean, that's the only two I need. Um, if not, I'll just get some bigger ones off of my dad because he has a whole case full. So you know he doesn't need that much. Okay, real quick. So if you thought those were a lot of soft plastics. You'd be quite mistaken. Um, I've got the majority of my grubs on this side um, because they're kind of small and oh, oh, I'm lagging. Sorry. Um, 
because they're kind of small and they're just really nice to just keep in small areas. Um, now I like to change up the colors in here to where I start out with a regular white jig, right? Or with a regular green jig. Uh, something like, oh dang, this one turned watermelon. Thank God. Okay, something like this, just like a brown jig. Actually, no, this one is actually green. This actually originated as green. Um, but I go ahead and mix them with all the different ones in here. Um, this one is actually the one that they got the brown tint from. But this used to be green. I threw a little red in there. Um, one of my plastics that's red. And it goes ahead and dyes it. And it gives us this really nice, unique color um, to the jig. And I've got hits on it before. But the reality of it is that I just get too excited and I rip it out of the fish's mouth before it has a chance to bite it completely. Uh, wow. Wow. This one's a really nice color. It kind of looks like almost like a popper. It's got that orange on the front like if it was a popper. Uh, it, it looks really different to me. Unfortunately, I don't have any shaky heads. So, you know, that really diminishes what I can do um, because I have some some worms on here that I would actually rather use on shaky heads. Something like this. This is what I would use on a shaky head. Um, I've used shaky heads before, um, but they were mainly my, my brothers. And my brothers were like way older than me, so I don't really talk to them much. Um, but yeah, let me see if I can find it somewhere. Oh. Uh, what did oh, okay. So, oh, I'm lagging. Sorry, guys, I was lagging a bit. I'm still lagging just a bit. Um, but anyway. So these are basically just smaller versions of the Rocket Craw. Um, I think that's what it was called, right? Yeah, Rocket Craw. I forgot what these are called. I just kind of keep them with me because they have a smaller appearance. And this thing tends to frighten away some bass for some reason because it's so big and it's so bulky. So a lot of bass that I uh, come across don't really want to come near it because they kind of they just kind of back away from it um, but yeah I, I love to use these craws in the ponds because there's craws in the ponds that I fish and they look so much different so um, I don't know it kind of gives out that unique presentation in different areas and that's what I like to do I like to I like to give the fish something new something new something opportunistic like I said bass are opportunistic that's how they're always going to be um, but actually, the bass at the ponds are actually really hard to catch because people just come and feed them all the time. So, yeah. So, go to newer ponds. They're usually really good. Or ones down in Gilbert, they actually restock bass all the time. So, I just keep these with me because they give off a smaller appearance. And some bass really just love... They love that, they're, that their prey is helpless. And that really helps when they're babies. So, yeah, that really does come in come and play really well um, actually these I usually actually just Texas rig these um, and they work great uh, I normally don't put a bullet weight on it I actually sometimes put egg weights on them because it kind of reminds me of the jig without the skirt on it and that's really nice for me it really gives me the opportunity to change things up and get a better feel for the ground on the bottom so yeah, let's move on. Just keep those in there. Oh my god, that's so loud. I hate it. I hate it with passion. Sorry, guys. I've just got a big box of, you know, hooks and stuff. Um, okay. So I've got two things here. Um, I actually need to go buy uh, some more, some more small hooks because I'm running out. 
Now this little guy is a little panther martin, very small. I use this for trout. Works great. This is actually my trout, trout bluegill box um, because I trout is one of the. For me, I love making trout into a soup. Um, my grandmother loves it. That's where I actually got it from. I'm actually gonna cover up that video because it's. Um, I don't want you know. That'd be bad. Um, but yeah, and I have this little tiny grub in here. That's actually already set up too. Very small, very. It's just it's just nice to have. Um, yeah, but I do need to go pick up some more some more hooks. Okay, so these are two different cast masters. One of them is smaller than the other. Um, this one I usually use for white bass because the white bass can't fit this whole thing in their mouth if they're not big enough and that's what really concerns me. So I just like to throw in something small that the, that those small fish can definitely bite on, especially the striped bass because we need them out of Lake Pleasant for some reason. We're not, if we catch it, we have to take it home or kill it. Um, they're an invasive species and Arizona just apparently doesn't want that even though they've kind of been accepted into the whole environment. So yeah. Um, but anyway, this one's a little different. It's got that little blue stripe going down it. This one does not. It's just plain silver. It's great for using in clear water because you want that that sunlight to be hitting it and reflecting off it and attracting those fish. Um, okay, so this is a small jerk bait. Um, it's really nice to have uh, just for throwing up against uh, some heavy, heavy rocks and heavy cover. Sometimes up against like ledges and stuff like that because it's not too big and I'm not afraid that it's going to get stuck on things. So that's why I really keep it in the front in the front box pocket. Um, yeah. Now, these ones, oh, these things are brand new. I've never fished with them. And they're actually kind of stuck together. So we're just going to kind of deal with that for now. But, alright, so this one's kind of like a nice shad color. And this one's kind of like a nice bluegill slash bass color. It's got the nice blue or nice orange on her belly like a bluegill would have. Yeah, but it's got that those like little black blotches and stripes like a basswood. Um and I think that's really nice. Oh well, the video started over. Oh. Um but these are really nice. I have seen people catch these all the time. Or catch bass on these all the time and I thought, hmm, this might be a nice thing to pick up one day. So I did. Um but yeah. Um, now the rest of this box is just full of, it's got some travel hooks, big and small, and yeah, and then some of my bait holding hooks for worms and stuff. Um, now if you guys want to see like, a video on using like actual bait and not lures, go ahead and let me know. Uh, I'll let you know what's good for what um, during what time of the year, especially up at Lake Roseville. Ooh. The channel cat's back in there. Let me tell you, even the flathead still bite this. They'll, they'll bite it. If, remember, if you want to know what they're biting on, just go ahead and tell me. Um, so yeah, uh, that's basically it. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please remember to leave a comment down below and like and subscribe to my channel. This means a, this really means a lot to me, guys. Um, like I said, shout out to Charles Martinez, the first guy to comment, and he gave me great ideas. Um, so yeah, thanks, guys. Really thank you for the support. So see you guys next time. Bye.